today is going to be a presentation about uh, the integration with Teams and Dynamics 365. We're going to cover the native integration with Microsoft Teams, the accessibility and usability with Teams, a different way that you can leverage Teams that are doing requests for specific records uh, either from Business Central or Dynamics 365. We're going to showcase uh, as well Copilot and its use uh, with Teams integration and meetings, summaries, and different abilities that you have in Copilot today. We're going to see also different way to do the collaboration with Dynamics 365 and Teams integration. We're going to start with the different integration within Business Central. The, the goal there is just to showcase what currently exists in Business Central. Then we'll try as much as we can cover other integration either with Copilot, then go within Dynamics 365 uh, customer engagement. Most of those integration can be done in, in Dynamics. Uh, there is also a lot that can be built using tools like Power Automate to create more complex integration. As an example, what we've developed at Justisoft in, in the past, we use Teams apps called Approval to do approval management within Teams, but with Business Central. So we generate uh, approval requests and approval management within a, a Teams app called uh, Approval. So there is a lot of uh, complexity and uh, possibilities that you can do within the Teams integration, but we're going to start with the basic one in Business Central. As of today, there is two types of integration that exist with, with Business Central. I know we don't use often the, the share this page option, but there is a possibility to share to Teams and that work with pretty much every document, file or anything within Business Central. So it can be a sales quote, it can be an invoice, it can be a customer cards or anything like that. There is always that small share button at the top that's able to share directly the information within Teams. So this way you're able to select if you want to share to a specific person, it can be shared to a channel, it can be shared to a different way. And again, Business Central is going to offer uh, a short preview of the information to that specific document. So here's, uh, I've got a sales quote. It gives me some details from the sales quote, the amount with taxes the contact, the customer, and so on. So this way I'm able to share, as an example, if I need to share the sales quote to a specific salesperson, the quote is really, you can send it to your customer. This way I can use those process to do so. I can share it. Everything's going to be shared in Teams. I'm just going to try to show you in Teams as well what it looks like. So when you look in Teams, you'll be able to see that everything is integrated. I don't need to copy paste the link or anything like that. I can do everything directly from uh, Business Central. So this way I'm able to save time. There is a second integration with Business Central. There is a, a bot that's able to search some information directly from Teams, mostly is finding customer vendors and it doesn't go more in depth than that. So you cannot really go and search for a sales quote, but Microsoft is currently investing a lot to develop that integration and to be a bit more complex. As of today, you could simply find a more specific vendor or vendor card or anything like that, and you can share it as well directly in Teams. So. Mostly the big part of the integration of stuff today is the ability to share from Business Central to Teams directly. The second part is that small widget, so you're able to find some information in Business Central. One thing that we show frequently in Dynamics 365 is there is the ability to pin a Dynamics 365 dashboard within Teams. Because Business Central doesn't have the same kind of dashboard, normally what we show with our customer is to use the Power BI app as you 
often have a lot of reports from Power BI. We also develop Power BI reports often for BC customers. So this way you're able to pin your Power BI dashboard directly in Teams. As an example, you could pin a PNL or something like that if you'd like to have a quick access. You could decide with which charts or reports from Business Central that you'll like to, to have there. But again, there is not the ability to select generic reports from Business Central, but we are able to do it with uh, Power BI reports there. You have also the ability to add specific views within your Business Central. So this way, with a small plus there, you can add a tab to Business Central and select which section and which type of content you'd like to have. Uh, because Teams channel can be private, you can create a, a Teams channel just for yourself. As an example, this one for Business Central, that's only me that's within that specific channel. And this way I'm able to add those tabs that are only relevant to me and my role. So this way I'm able, as an example here, I, I put the chart of accounts and I'm able to view that information quickly without having to go within Business Central every time. As an example, there was a few options from Business Central there. Again, if I manage vendors, items, or bank accounts, I could easily decide which view, which environment, and, and so on. And I could save it within my, my Teams channel. So this way, I'm able to create shortcuts to Business Central within Teams, and I don't need to necessarily have to open the specific tabs mm -hmm. within Business Central every time. I can simply check that quickly every day. And yes, Fred, a, a user can do exactly everything within these yep. views, these tabs, uh, as if it, the person was working directly in Business Central, if I'm not mistaken, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm. it's what they call a web embed integration. So I'm really within Business Central at this moment. I'm able to change the information. I'm able to navigate within Business Central, I'm able to do some specific entries and so on. So I, this way, I'm able to use Teams as uh, pretty much a shortcut to Business Central and save some time on specific operations. So this way, you can create those tabs that's relevant for you. And one thing I show in sales or in marketing, like having those specific things that you do every morning can be pretty much like you'll do in shortcut in Microsoft Edge. You can do the same within Teams. Okay, that's uh, and it's very important to know that uh, this integration is native. That means that you don't need a uh, you don't need any development to activate those uh, integrations, so this can be uh, activated on the administrative side. So in Business Central, if ever you do decide to that you'd like to have that feature activated, we'll be able to provide you with the uh, necessary procedure on how to proceed to do that activation. And of course, we're there if ever you do uh, need our help, our assistance to activate those integration. Maybe it's already present in your business central. Just let us know and we'll be able to assist you on the activation of, of that uh, feature. One of the example also I talk about is we develop an integration between business central and the approval from teams so this way as an example for a purchase order or different things that you would like to require approval we're setting up the approval process within those apps so we set up rules and different uh, level of regulation that will lead to to approvals and it's going to create like approval request to the manager or the specific person that's supposed to do approval and they're going to be able to simply respond and this way it's going to 
send the information back to Business Central as well. Uh, Fred, to have access to that feature, do you, uh, all users need to be licensed with Business Central, the approval process? No, you know? they can after only access to Teams, and this way they don't need to have full user to Business Central. They can approve a PO there, and they don't need to log in in Business Central. So this way, most of the time, I am marketing VPs. I don't have access to Business Central, but I'm able to approve invoice. I'm able to approve POs and so on without going to the the ERP every time. Oh, okay. That's that's interesting. That's perfect. I don't know, Christian, if you're able to talk a bit about Power Automate and the ability to create uh, Teams cards or publish. Yeah, yeah. It, of course, what we just saw here is the Teams integration in Business Central. And Fred gave you some uh, use case on uh, uh, different scenar business scenarios where that could uh, jump in and be useful for an organization. Like we mentioned, the native integration with Microsoft Teams that you're on Dynamics 365 or Business Central, it's totally uh, a native uh, integration. That means there's no need for specific or special developments to activate that integration. For the approval process that Fred show, showed us just a, a few seconds ago, this requires Power Automate to be able to do those. Power Automate is the tool to create automa uh, automations, such as creating notifications from the Business Central, it could be email notifications, it could be, so those are the different scenarios of automation you can use. And the, the cards that are sent, they can be recreated in Power Automate so that, uh, for example, if the, the, the salesperson received the approval of, uh, of their uh, proposition, they, they're going to receive it just like uh, if I jump in uh, Dynamics uh, in uh, Teams. Let me just uh, switch my screen here. Okay. So that basically how these notification will show up is that uh, the bell here will uh, pop up with a, a, a one underneath here and you'll be able to see uh, what this notification is about. Uh, internally at just the stuff, we even created uh, those type of notifications for employees' birthdays. So those are the type of notification that can be included from BC or from Dynamics 365 to Teams. So that, that, that are, is a feature that can be connected with Teams without any issues. And just to roll back to the calendar here. So I'm going to show you full access accessibility and usability within Teams. Just like Fred showed you exactly for Dynamics 365, you also have the possibility to have basically the whole application on pinned on the Teams. And you have exactly the same experience, user experience as if you were working through a browser. You have access to the CRM that you need to work on. So this can be really easily configured be used. So basically all you need to do is go here in apps and you find Dynamics 365, if you install it. And afterwards, you're gonna it's going to bring you to this page here on settings. And you just need to make sure that you're using the right environment, the right model-driven app, so the app that you're using every day for your uh, daily operations, and you save. And then you'll have the full uh, Dynamics 365 experience within uh, Teams. Uh, without any issues. And just like uh, when you want to pin something on a taskbar, it's exactly the same concept. So you right click on the icon here, and you, here I have it pinned. Uh, the option you have, if it's not already pinned, it's gonna be written pin here. And every time you're gonna open up your Teams, you'll have your Dynamics 365 in here handy. And other application that you might have installed that you'd like to use. Maybe you want to use Planner for your task and so on. So you can really add all those up there. If you don't have access to this button, it's probably because internally uh, your Office 365 administrator uh, did not give you those privilege to add uh, different apps. So that would explain why you don't have that button on your, uh, on your sidebar uh, here. Uh, the next thing I, uh, I'd like to show you, I'm going to jump in in the uh, the CRM itself. 
a lot of situations right now, I'm, I'm in the opportunity form in Dynamics 365 cells. A lot of situation can be brought upon that for which you need to uh, create a team's uh, channel. You need to have people involved in your uh, organization to help you with an opportunity. So we have here a section that's called sales team. So basically you're adding every, every different users of the CRM for which they would need to have an access to, uh, to this future uh, Teams channel. So let's say I want to add uh, uh, my colleague here. So what's going to happen here is that when, I, if you notice on the top ribbon here, you have a button called Collaborate with the Teams logo. You simply click on this button here. And what's happening right now is Dynamics is setting up a, a, a new channel, a new team connection. So create a new connection. I can give a name or I can use an existing channel for which I'd like to attach this opportunity, or you can create a new one. For the, this example, I'm, I have already created a channel with open opportunities. So I click next and I can simply add it to the general channel. Once again, I click next. Next step, I can here add members. So by default, it's already, if you notice, I'm a user, Cassandra Monacas is here, and have a sales team member, Pierre Moreau, that's already selected for my team a channel that's going to be created. So it gives you a form on who should have access to this channel, and I click on Finish. So as what's happening right now is Dynamics 365 is connecting with teams to create the channel with the opportunity. In a few uh, seconds, I'll be able to okay. show you the results of that. Christian, if there is someone that doesn't have access to Dynamics, can they still see the channel or is there a way to add them to the channel? The user that doesn't have, they, they're going to have access to the channel, but they would not have access to, unfortunately, to I've tested, they would not have access, they would have access to the whole channel, but they would not be able to read uh, this uh, tab here, that's basically the opportunity that we've just attached to the uh, team's channel. So, but nothing <clears throat> prevents the team from doing a screen capture and, and posting it in the post section. So they would still have access to, to the data that's uh, shown in the opportunity. If it's something that, that, that would be uh, uh, possible to, it would be a way to, to work around this, uh, uh, this, uh, this situation. But uh, if yep. they, they only need to read, they could use a team member license just to exactly. read the information. Okay. Exactly. Which are, are less expensive. Of course, it's about $11 a month for that license. So they have a read access to the uh, opportunity form here. And what's useful here is that the team channel created a, a dedicated SharePoint folder also, so that if you have proposals uh, that needs to be uploaded in your SharePoint. If you have different important files that you need to keep track of, they'll, they'll show up here and they'll also show up in uh, Dynamics in the document se uh, section that you'll have access to that uh, SharePoint uh, documentation in, in the files tab, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have access to those documents that have been, that, that are, uh, that have been sh shared in that uh, team channel. So th that feature is really interesting. It could be done not only on opportunities, but a company that has, a, for example, a, a customer service. They have a support case that they need to build a, a war room. It could be an easy access to have a, a, an easy way to set up a team and have every person that's needed in that war room channel to fix the issue of a, a customer or a customer request. So uh, there's a lot of different business scenarios for which this could be really a, a useful tool and it could bring value. Uh, instead of having everything spread out, uh, all the documents being uh, owned by different uh, owners, but by using that team, it really helps the collaboration within uh, the organization and within the team. Uh, and so that's, if, mm -hmm. if I'm managing other processes, as an example, I'm managing contract within uh, or contract management solution, can the integration still work the same way? I'm able to share contracts with my teams and collaborate uh, with the yeah. same integration? A great question. Any table that exists in Dynamics 365, we can activate that that collaborate uh, option uh, that's going to show up in the form that you'd like to uh, create the, uh, 
the team. So yeah, that, that the answer is yes. Even if it's custom a custom table that was created specifically for your organization, there's no issues there. You can have access to that collaborate button. So that's one uh, that's one of the features I wanted to show you. Another way, let's say you don't need to go overboard that you don't need to necessarily create a theme. There's also within the right the the, the right slider as a side section here. You have this button here, which is basically your teams integrated for your chat communication. So this is really the same thing. So whatever, uh, whenever someone tries to communicate with me and I have this open, it's going to pop up in the CRM as well as in my teams. But the real value here is really if you need to have a, a in-context conversation uh, concerning an opportunity, let's say you need to have an approval or you need to have a, a, an opinion on the issue on the opportunity you can create a context a con, a conversation so i click here in new connected chat i decide who want i want to uh, speak with and i give a i need some advice and i start the conversation like this and on the if i so what you see here i'm going to show you in the in the, the, the teams I have here a conversation. So in, instead of seeing Pierre Moreau, I have really the name of the uh, opportunity for which I'm doing an in-context conversation. I have here, uh, uh, Pierre would receive this, exact this box here. So he would have a really a, a quick view, overview of, of what we're talking about. He has a, an estimated revenue. He sees when I'm supposed to close this deal. As we can see, I'm uh, way behind in, in my estimated close date. and. Uh, and who is the owner of this and if the other user for which whom i'm doing the conversation has a dynamics 365 license they, they'll be able to look in the record specifically and every in interaction so everything that's been exchanged between me and pi will be kept in the activity section of the opportunities they're going to show up in here so that uh, I, every uh, different members of my uh, organization have an access to that conversation I had with PI specifically concerning this opportunity. So this really helps us give us context because as you in a day, you can talk a lot of different uh, subjects with, with uh, your colleagues. So um, by doing this uh, in context chat, you have really the context that what was talked about is really in context with the opportunity that is uh, right here. One thing that's interesting with sales co-pilot and team is that when you record a meeting, you have a, a way for you to have a summary of what was discussed. Uh, and you can have also a, a quick recap of the important points I was discussed during the meeting. So if ever you have to miss a meeting and you have you you'd like to have, still have a bit of context of what was talked about upon during that meet that meeting, you'll have a full access here of a conversation of what was important, what's good to know, what's what's the main discussion points, how was the feeling of the discussion. Right now we have highlights of the conversation. So this. Bear with me. This was a five minutes conversation. Of course, if we talk for a one hour meeting, there, your highlights, you're going to have way more highlights that are going to be available for you. You have here a timeline and it's going to uh, identify periods of the meeting for which the conversation was positive, at a period of time for which it was neutral, and a period of time for which it went on a negative side. Of course, it's not on facial recognition it's based upon. This is really based upon keywords of words that were mentioned during the meeting. So if I look, for example, if I click on the red dot here, it's going to bring me, me directly within the, the section out of conversation for which the, the conversation maybe took a negative twist. So that really helps the, not having to listen to the whole hour of the meeting. You can really uh, jump and see the, the transcription of what was discussed and what were the, the different words that were mentioned, which brings me to the other point. So we have here a mention. So this meeting was in French, unfortunately, but for example, I'd like to know when the price was mentioned and I want to see the customer reaction. So I can click on the mentioned word here and it's going to bring me to 
the, the time period for which the, the, the price was mentioned. And then I can see the, the, the reaction of, uh, of the, the client, uh, how he reacted when I offered the price of 32,500. Uh, so the sentiment was negative. And of course, uh, what she's mentioning, just to do a free form translation, she was really uh, not happy with the price that was offered. So it really gives us a good indication on the, the client reaction upon the, the, the price that was given to them. Other things you can see how, uh, what was the longest monologue? So how long was, uh, so it gives you different metrics that you can evaluate. So if, uh, for example, the client didn't talk the whole meeting, maybe that could be indicative that uh, the, the customer wasn't really interested in what, <laughs> what we were seeing. And on the recap, you can of course copy what was mentioned. So this is a, a nice way for you to keep track of, uh, it gives you, what we're copying right now, let me just open an old book to just give you an idea of what it looks like. So bear with me once again, we just thought this was a five minute conversation. So it gives you really a, a resume, a highlights of, uh, of everything that was mentioned during the, the, the meeting. So this is a way that we could automatically, we can automate so that every meetings, the, the highlights are automatically put in the activity feed so that uh, you can have a really a, a detailed a summary of, uh, of the conversation. So this is really a, something that I could see a lot of value for people, the organization that does sales meeting, that does calls for tenders, uh, the answer for different uh, RFPs, uh, they need to discuss the different questions or for during a demo to see the or on my case, I do a lot of demos. So whenever I, I record those meetings, I can uh, roll back and see quickly what were the different questions that were asked during the meeting so that I can make sure that I do the proper follow-ups with, with my customers. And yeah, Copilot can add a lot of different value. As an example, in Business Central, as of today, there is a lot of roadmap on, on top of Copilot, but there is one for complete bank account reconciliation made by Copilot. So within Business Central, there's the ability to do bank reconciliation by itself. So it's not only meeting recording, meeting analysis, but you can use it in your day-to-day -day work. There's still a lot to be done, a lot that's going to be transformed in, in next few months. Microsoft is investing a lot within AI, but you should have access to those options to be able to do some tasks within Business Central. At the same time, when we talk about the ability to create those Power Automates for Teams notification, there is that ability to ask Copilot to create those automation directly. So here's one example. They, they ask Copilot to create when there is a new customer added in Business Central to send an update to the sales team on, on Teams. And this way, Microsoft Copilot and Business Central is able to create everything. And the second part is right now there is a new product from Microsoft called Microsoft 365 Copilot for Finance. It's separate from Business Central, that tool is meant to uh, look at more your specific files. So as an example, uh, the whole integration that Christian was showing with the Teams meeting, with the ability to read emails and so on, you're able to do it with Copilot for Finance. So you're able, as an example, send some data from account reconciliation, use Excel files, and ask Copilot to analyze your file and do some recommendation. So this way you're able to use more specific documents, not the integration with Business Central, but use as an example, different documents that you might have in finance and ask Microsoft Copilot to do all the analysis as well. So that was our webinar for today. So thank you so much. Have a good Have day. Have a nice day.